What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. John the Video Guy here. And in today's video, we're gonna be going over different frame rates and resolutions inside Premiere Pro. So say if you're working on a video project and you have a bunch of different video types with you know 4K, 1080, maybe horizontal, vertical videos, and also like high frame rates, low frame rates, how do you work with all these different types of videos for your video project? So I'm gonna be going over all of these in this video here today. It's important to understand these aspects, especially for delivering the highest quality video possible for your customers or your clients or whoever the video project is for. So be sure to stay to the very end because there's a lot of insight that you can take away from this video. And not only that, but I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. I post twice a week on a Monday and a Thursday. And with that, let's dive in and talk about different resolutions and frame rates. All right, guys, so I'm inside Premiere Pro here. I'm gonna hit the tilde key to bring up the full page view of the project window. And as you can see here, I have a bunch of different video footages and they're all in different frame rates, as you can see here, and they're all in different resolutions. So you got some 1080 vertical, some 4K vertical, some normal, just high definition horizontal, and also 4K uh, horizontal as well. So there's a lot going on. We have horizontal, vertical videos, different frame rates, different resolutions. And how do we uh, go about utilizing the different footage and making sure everything looks okay in the final project? Let's first talk about frame rates. And frame rates are very noticeable if you do them incorrectly. So say if you create a sequence at a high frame rate, but you put in a low frame rate video, you'll notice that some frames get duplicated. Let me show you how this works. So if we make a new sequence based off of this 30 frames per second video, and if we drag in this 23.976 video, you'll notice if we play this back and go full screen here, if we go forward, you can see this frame and this frame are the same from 23.15 and 23.16. So you can see Premiere Pro is actually duplicating the same frame twice to supplement for that 30 frame rate sequence setting. So it's important to actually work in the lowest frame rate possible when you're working in a video project with so many different frame rates. Before we go any further, I gotta have to credit pixels.com for all these free stock royalty free videos. You can check them out by just going to pixels.com forward slash videos to see their free stock video library. You can search for a lot of different videos and that's where I got all the video clips that I'll be showing you here today. So shout out to them for providing these videos. So next let's talk about resolution. And this is probably gonna be one of the most noticeable differences, especially on the client facing end. They're gonna notice if a video is smaller or larger than another video. So what do you have to look for when you're doing resolution inside video editing? You first have to look at the deliverables. So what is the client expecting at the end of the video project? Are they expecting a 4K video? Are they expecting a 1080 video? Are they expecting a vertical or a horizontal video? You have to be really upfront with the customer and understand what the end product needs to be and make it that way. Um, and that's kind of like the cornerstone of the video project. Now say if this is your own video, you can do whatever you want, but what would be best is to basically go about what is the most often used video clip in your video footage. So say if 80% of your footage is in 1920 by 1080 and maybe 20% of it is in 4K, it wouldn't really make sense to have the whole thing in 4K because most of it isn't shot in 4K. So you kind of have to look at it from that perspective. What is most of your video footage shot on? So in this example, I'm gonna make a sequence actually based off of all this different video footage. And what we can notice right away is it is a vertical orientation. Most of these videos are vertical. Only a few, I think only two are actually horizontal. So I'm gonna, it's gonna be vertical for sure. But what's the frame rate? Well, like I said earlier, let's do the lowest. So definitely 23. And if we look at the resolution, it's a pretty decent mix between high definition and 4K footage. To be safe, we'll probably just make it 
high definition, just 1080. So I'm going to make a new sequence actually based off of this video clip. And when we drag this out, we have these sequence settings. So 23 frames, 1880 by 1902. This is the lowest resolution of the bunch and the lowest frame rate. So everything is gonna to conform to this when I put it into Premiere Pro. And actually before we add any of these clips, I wanna talk about set frame rate. So what you can do actually inside Premiere Pro is say if you have different video footages with different resolutions and different uh, sizes of the resolutions, you can actually conform the video that you put into the timeline to actually adjust and scale to fit the sequence settings. So to do that, if you go up to Premiere Pro Preferences and you go to Media, you can actually uh, change the default media scaling to set frame size. If you didn't change this, it would be set to none. But when you set it to set to frame size, what happens is when you put all these clips in the timeline, and if we go to one here, you'll notice that in the effects controls, it has already scaled it down for you where if you didn't do it, it would look like this, where it would be set to 100, and then you would have to go in manually and adjust it. So that's a way to save some time, especially if you're working with a lot of different resolutions, you'll automatically adjust the width of that raw video footage to your sequence settings. So as we go through here, there's just a few that just need a little bit more cropping, you know, different videos from cell phones recorded in a few different ways. And this one I believe was 1080, so we'll just readjust that by hitting the reset button. And then this one, I believe it was 1080 by 1920, but remember that the, the vertical width of this video, or the vertical height of this video is actually 1920. So what we actually have to do is scale this up. And you know, we are up sampling this video, and I don't recommend doing this, but once again, when you look at the whole sequence, this video clip is not that long in proportion to all the other video clips. So it's about making sacrifices when it counts in this regards of scaling things up if it's for a very short long length of time, it's okay. So we got all these clips in here, and they're all in the same frame right now and they're also in the same resolution now or in the same sequence settings accordingly. Now one thing to notice when I play back this clip specifically, you'll notice that it, there's a lot of motion she dips out of frame a lot. And what's a cool feature inside Premiere Pro now is called auto reframe. And what auto reframe does, it, it basically detects a video clip or a sequence and it reframes it to a specific orientation. And this is really helpful if you have different resolutions that are you're converting from horizontal to a vertical like I'm doing here. And it basically detects the motion and realigns the footage based on the sequence settings. So I'll show you how to do it for a clip. If you click on the clip and you go to effects, you can type in auto reframe. And you can drag it to the clip and it'll show up in effects controls and you can scroll down here and you have a few different options under motion tracking she does move fast so i'm going to change this to faster motion the other setting i'm going to leave alone and then i'm going to click analyze and what this does is analyzes the footage and basically detects the motion in the clip and tries to center align it with the sequence so when we play this back now it follows her a lot better it still dips out a little bit, but it's a pretty big enhancement to where we were without the effect. So if we turn it back off and we replay it, you can see it doesn't follow her at all. She dips back and then forward. So this is a really helpful way, especially if you're working with different orientations of videos, you know, vid vertical videos are becoming more popular. And if you shoot horizontally and need to convert them vertically, this is definitely a cool way to convert those videos. That way it follows the motion. You can also do this with a whole sequence. So I'll show you how to do that. If you go up to sequence, auto reframe sequence, there's also a few options where you can actually uh, change the target aspect ratio so you can actually change it to be a square vertical uh, vertical 4 5 vertical 9 16 or horizontal and then click create it basically makes a new sequence uh, with that 
Uh, I'm not gonna do it here because all of them are fine. It was just that clip, but that's a way if you have a whole sequence that needs to be, you know, converted to vertical, that's a good way to do that. So, you know, say if you need to make several versions of a sequence, maybe you make a 1920 by 1080 version of this, but you also need an iPhone uh, video version of it. This is a good way to do that to the whole sequence. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you found this insightful and informative if you're looking to work more with different frame rates and resolutions. If you wanna learn more about Premiere Pro and more about the software, I actually put a playlist together on my YouTube channel. I'll link it right up here. So feel free to go and check that out. As well, you can always check out my website. It's johnthevideoguide.com. There's a lot of great resources on there, such as my podcast and my blog, where I post once a month. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.